Hello, BookTube. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. Today I'm going to be doing a book review, and the book is called The Campaigns of Sargon II, King of Syria, from 721 to 705 BC. And this was written by Sarah C. Melville, and there's the book. There you go. And it was a very good book. This book was printed in 2016 by Oklahoma University Press, I believe. University of Oklahoma Press. And it was very well written. I did enjoy this book. Sarah Melville did a great job telling the story of Sargon II of Assyria. And he is an interesting individual. So Sargon inherited a, an already well-established empire and an already effective army. And his job was just to make sure that he was able to consolidate his power and then do what other kings in the ancient world did. Uh, expand their territory if they could and do a lot of public works to show their affection and appreciation to the gods and you know keep the population working so that uh, they're too busy to rebel and it was a great book Sarah Melville did a great job talking about Sargon's campaigns the logistics that his armies had to face uh, in terms of getting to where they needed to go the distances they they traveled as well as the hardships that uh, occurred during those travels. I mean, they were in the Zargos Mountains, and the Zargos Mountains are to the east of Assyria, and it is a very hilly, mountainous terrain, obviously they're mountains, with a lot of snow. So when S Sargon had to actually campaign up there, he had to make sure that he did it during the summer season and that his army was out of there before the snow came, or his army would have been stuck and essentially starved to death. So this was a really good book. What can I tell you? I took a lot of notes. So I was watching another booktuber and uh, in her book, she's also a, I think it's Passages of Time, her channel. I'll link to her channel down below. And she had tons of sticky notes in her book. And I had never done that before. I used to always just, you know, tag my book. So if you see that, those, those are the tags I use for my book. And uh, just write in, uh, you know, on graph paper and uh, put my notes in there. But uh, she had sticky notes all in her book. And I thought, that is a great idea. So I did the same thing. So I've got a ton of sticky notes. And each note has the page where I got the information from. And it was just a lot easier. Uh, so what can I tell you about the book? So on page 29 of the book, uh, Sargon's army had between twenty to 30,000 men. And it was broke, well, 20 to 30,000 men, charioteers, cavalrymen, and infantry. And the infantry was broken up into groups of 5,000, and then subdivided into groups of 1,000, and then subdivided into groups of 500, and then subdivided into groups of 100, and finally uh, subdivided into groups of 50. And those 50 men would stick together, they would camp together, and they would do everything together. And they would join into the second group to make 100. They would join into the third group or the higher group to make 500. And then into another group to make 1,000. And then into the final group to make a 5,000 battalion. And with 30,000 men, you know, that's six battalions right there. So, wow. Page 193, page 45. Honey and seed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sarah Melville also talks about... Um, how medics worked in the ancient world and they used honey and cedar as antiseptic. And uh, when I say cedar, I mean the sap from cedars. And they used that as antiseptic to treat wounds during battle. And that was pretty interesting. Peak broken to cross, Mount Cirmus. Oh, I remember that. On page 43 and 44, Melville talks about how Sargon II actually leveled a mountain peak to get his army across. Wow. What else? Uh, 719 BC, Sargon aids Menea, a client state rich in horses. So horses was a big thing uh, for the Assyrians and for all the kingdoms in the Mesopotamian area because it was all flat land, especially in the Levantine area. A lot of flat land and uh, chariots and cavalry were a big thing back then. Ah, oh, Conquest of Babylon. Here was a good one on page 154. The Conquest of Babylon meant that Assyria had direct access to the Persian Gulf and trade routes to um, Dilmun, Bahrain, I believe. Anyways, 
it was pretty cool. Oh, hostages. Yeah. So hostages were used throughout the ancient world as a way to keep client states in check and conquered civilizations in check. So basically what Sargon and a lot of the kings back then did was they would uh, not kidnap, but escort the royal family back to Assyria and essentially hold them under house arrest to maintain, to ensure that the king, and they would keep the king uh, in place and uh, ensure that he stayed loyal to Assyria. And if he rebelled, it would be pretty much guaranteed that the hostages uh, wouldn't live very long after the fact. Oh, wow. Okay. Do you want to hear about um, how aggressive and um, badass the Assyrian army was? Okay. Here's one. Near Harar, Assyrians beheaded 4,000 warriors and took as many hostages. Harsh treatment was used to set an example for other city-states or other kingdoms in the area as a way to let them know that the Assyrians meant business and it was better to surrender without a fight to Sargon II than to fight him. And again, harsh treatment was a way to ensure loyalty and put fear in people's minds so that uh, they would think twice before rebelling against Sargon II. What else can I tell you about this book? Oh, the capital city. So one of the building projects that Sargon II undertook was to build a new city for Assyria. And it was called dur Sharukin, And it was a major trade center. So they essentially took this uncultivated land and turned it into a major trading spot. And it took over 10 years to build. So it was not a small accomplishment. And unfortunately, Sargon was only able to revel in it for a couple of months. He held a huge feast once it was officially opened. And uh, he didn't skimp out on uh, the extravagance. He went all the way. And then a couple of months later, he fought a, another tribal group. And unfortunately, he died in that battle. But uh, luckily, while it was a blow to the Assyrian Empire, it was not a fatal blow. His son, Sena. Cherib, I believe his name was, uh, took over and was able to continue fighting and keep control of the empire. Yeah, so that was uh, a lot of my notes. Uh, I've got a whole bunch here. I'm not going to go through all the notes because you don't really want to hear my notes. But suffice it to say, this was a very well-written book. I did enjoy it. I think I gave this book three out of five stars. And some might think that that's not a great rating. But for me, that's a good rating. It means that uh, it was a good book. And I would recommend this book. Not a lot of books for me get four stars. You have to be very, very good to uh, get a four star for me. And you have to be godlike to get a five star rating for me. I mean, that's how good a book has to be. So a three out of five is a very good rating uh, for me to give to a book. Yeah, so that is my review of Sargon II, the campaigns of Sargon II, King of Assyria. Again, great book. I would recommend it if you're into ancient history. Anyways, Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. Yeah, so I got a lot of sticky notes. Was it the Horn of Africa? No, that's this is in the Persian Gulf. Okay, let's stop talking about that.